This is Matthew Robert Payne from Australia. This is a prophetic protocol in church. This is uh, chapter 19 and this is title 2, uh, Prophecy to be Judged. Um, it's taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 14 verse 29. Let two or three prophets speak and let the others judge. Now over here it says let the spirits of the prophets be subject to the prophets. Let It says here uh, let two or three three prophets speak and let the others judge okay now in my last teaching I said I don't feel that this person would have to be a prophet to speak in the church surely a person with the gift of prophecy could speak in the church and um, and, uh, and yet he seems to be reinforcing that they're meant to be prophets because he's repeated it twice here but anyway um, I feel that someone with the gift of prophecy should be encouraged to speak in the church. I feel that um, prophets, uh, people in the office of prophet, should be called to judge the prophetic word being spoken. The elder of the church, the um, pastor of the church, someone who's mature in the Lord and mature in discernment should judge the prophetic words being spoken. Now, part of judging the prophetic words being spoken is uh, to apply Thessalonians that we're not to despise prophecies. So, uh, Thessalonians says that we're not to despise prophecies. Uh, so, uh, we're meant to let prophecies happen in our meetings. Um, and uh, we're to... Um, I'll, um, I'll get the passage. So... Um, uh, he says, uh, uh, do not quench the spirit, do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good. That's uh, 1 Thessalonians 5 verse 20 and 21. Do not despise prophecies, test all things, hold fast to what is good. So when someone speaks prophetically in a meeting, it's up to the mature prophets or the people... Uh, gifted in the sermon of the Holy Spirit to test what has been said. If anything is out of order or doesn't seem to be right, uh, that's to be set aside and, and the congregation told just to ignore that sentence or that sentence. Uh, we'll put that aside and see what happens with that or uh, point blank say uh, we're not going to accept that. But keep what is good. A prophet, a uh, maturing prophet, can, can have unresolved hurts and pain and anguishes in the heart. They can be having revelations of Old Testament judgments and stuff. And they can speak a bit of condemnation or a bit of judgment into the church. But 90% of their prophecy may be beautiful and really come from the Spirit of God. And just 10% come from the flesh of the prophet. Paul says in Thessalonians to keep that 90% and just put aside that 10%. Test all things. Weigh the 10% 10, uh, 10 up or the 50% up and keep the good and throw out the bad. It doesn't mean that it's a wrong prophecy. It just means that there's a bit of the person's flesh involved, a bit of the pain of the prophet involved rather than the pure word of God. Um, and uh, let the people mature in prophecy judge the prophetic words and make those judgment calls when it comes to doing that. I think that I've covered that well enough.